happy day. God is good. And all the time. Very excited today. I've been waiting for this day to see what happens today. The whole week we've been meeting here from 5.45 to 8. But now it's the Sabbath. We're going to sing and praise God as we stay safe throughout the week. Welcome to the Twin Cities Evangelistic Team. And the theme is Hope for a Dying World. Sing with us. We're going to sing songs of praise and worship. But before we begin, Gabo, can you please pray for us? first song we're going to sing is What a Friend We Have in Jesus. On our corner at night.
Jesus friend, but wholly lean on Jesus' name, on Christ the sorry broken stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. Where darkness seems to veil his face, I rest on his Tuwezi kuwinia, 
ya mikuri basi kwa damu ya Yesu tutepotea milele basi kwa damu ya Yesu tungepotea milele hatuna haki wapendwa bila neema ya Yesu hatuwezi kuingia Paradiso ya mbinguni pasipo damu ya Yesu tungepotea milele pasipo damu ya Yesu tungepotea milele Mendo lake kwetu sisi Akamtuma mwanae Tupate kuho kolewa Nema hime shashuka Kwa mdhabi duniani Ili apate wakofu Hamtazame wakozi Mungu baloka honyesha Mendo lake kwetu sisi Haka mtuma mwanae Tupate kuho kolewa Nema ime shashuka Kwa mdhambi dunia hii Ili apate wakofu Amtazame mwakozi Hatuna haki wapendwa Tuwezi kuhidia Paradiso ya mbinguni Pasipo damu ya Yesu Tungepotea milele Pasipo damu ya Yesu Tungepotea milele Hatuna haki wapendo Ila lehema ya Yesu Tuwezi kuhigia Paradiso ya mbinguni Pasipo damu ya Yesu Tungepote na milele Pasipo damu ya Yesu Tungepote na milele
Happy Sabbath. Oh. For those who are watching, we who are in the church have been uh, observing uh, the guidelines on how to keep ourselves safe. Those who come to church at the entrance, there's a team that takes your temperature, there's a team that registers you, and there is hand sanitizer. We have the face mask, and there's a team that guides you where to sit. So we are actually observing all those guidelines. And I'm very excited that uh, those who are here in the church, you are very safe. You are indeed very, very safe. And I believe those who are watching too, wherever you are, you are adhering to social distancing and also keeping yourself safe. And uh, the reality is that COVID is a reality. It is there. Therefore, I want to welcome you all in our Father's house. And I believe that you've had a wonderful week. You have had a wonderful week. And I thank God we have started the second week of a Hope for the Dying evangelistic campaign. And I've been blessed for the last one week. I've been blessed for the last one week. And I know God has something good for us. And uh, at the end of it all, somebody will be born again. At the end of our meetings, somebody will be baptized. And if you need a, a prayer request, you need a, somebody to pray for you, we have a hotline number, the care number. And the care number is 763 200-1983. Again, the number is 763-200-1983. And also, if you want the decision card, if you want the decision card, it's easy to get it. Very easy to get it. I have my phone here with me. And on my phone, there is a code number. On the screen, you will see something like this, the code uh, uh, number. You can go to your TV, and you scan it on camera. And the decision card will come on your phone. And you feel the decision card. Wherever you are, we will get in touch with you. We will pray for you. We will minister to you. And I know God has something good for you. And God will bless you abundantly. By the way, my name is uh, Pastor Eric Mokua. I am the district pastor. And I'm glad we have a wonderful team we are working with here. That they are always here 247 working to make sure that this message reaches you wherever you are. Those who are in the far ends of this world. And I'm so glad... We have 10,000s of people who are watching us. This gospel of the kingdom is going far and wide. And if you have an opportunity, invite somebody. If you have an opportunity to minister to a friend, invite somebody. Say, come to my house and listen to the word of God. I believe you'll do that. That's the only assignment I'm giving you tonight. And I know you will do it in Jesus' name. Welcome once again, and I want to wish you a happy, happy Sabbath. We'll have a word of prayer, and then after the word of prayer, we'll hear, the next voice we'll hear is from our guest musician, Sister Lenis. She has been singing for the last uh, five days. I've been blessed with her music. Tonight is the last day, and I thank God for Sister Lenis. May God bless you abundantly as you keep on ministering to God's children wherever you go. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you, we thank you for the Sabbath. We thank you for this day of rest, that we can put aside all our worldly care and just come at your feet, sit down and rest in the beauty of your holiness. We thank you also for life, that you have sustained us to this very moment. 
we find ourselves living and moving and having our being in thee. Tonight, we thank you for the story of redemption, that we can come in your presence boldly, for we are rest assured that we will find grace and mercy. Father God, we also thank you for the preaching of your word from your manservant, Pastor Randy Skeet. You have used him in the past, and we have testified of your goodness. And tonight, again, we are ready, we are ready, we are ready to hear your voice. Speak to us. Take away every distraction. Capture our minds so that we may hear what you have prepared for us tonight. And at the end of it all, oh Lord, we will say to God be the glory for the great things you have done. Now take charge of these meetings to the very end. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Um, I'm going to sing a Swahili song. Uh, it was a request that was requested that I repeat the song that I sang earlier this week. It talks about the disciples of Jesus. Um, first of all, it's a question. Is there anything, have you ever tried to get something and you are the, like, at the middle of it, you feel like you're giving up? And then it points out to the story of Jesus and the disciples when they went to fish and they could not get any fish. And when Jesus came in, when Jesus came and saw how they were struggling, he told them to cast the net one more time. And when they did, there was a lot of fish. Uh, the song is an encouragement. It tells us to give ourselves to Jesus and trust in him. He is not going to let us down or ashamed us. His promises are sure and true. May God bless you. Mpende 
Yesu kwa moyo wako wote na hata kuaibisha tena ahadi za kweli za kweli tukiwa wafasi wake hatutayumba hata yaje kwa wimbi tutasimama upende Yesu kwa moyo wako wote na hata kuaibisha tena ahadi za kweli za kweli kiwa wafasi wake hatutayumba hata yaje kwa mawimbi tutasimama pende Yesu pende Yesu kwa moyo wako wote na hata kuaibisha tena ahadi za kweli za kweli tukiwa wafasi wake hatutayumba hata yaje kwa mawimbi If man had kept the law of God as given to Adam after his fall, preserved by Noah and observed by Abraham, there would have been no necessity for the ordinance of circumcision. And if the descendants of Abraham had kept the covenant of which circumcision was a sign, they would never have been seduced into idolatry neither would it have been necessary for them to suffer a life of bondage in Egypt. They would have kept God's law in mind and there would have been no necessity for it to be proclaimed upon Sinai or engraved upon the tables of stone. And had the people practiced the principles of the Ten Commandments, there would have been no need of the additional directions given to Moses. Patriarchs and Prophets, page 364, paragraph 2. God is good, and all the time. Good evening, everyone. How are you? How was your week? Good. So was mine. Quiet, productive, a lot of mental work. And I thank God for the privilege of having to work and study and think and pray and meditate in order that I may present His Word as effectively as the talents he has given me will allow me. I don't see Brother John, but I want him to know that someone sent me a text from another country to tell John to keep coming, they're aware of his presence, and I hope he will always show up at the meeting. So I wanted to tell John he's an international celebrity, but he's not here tonight, at least not yet. But we will get that message to him. And so God's people are aware of what we're doing. Of course, they're watching all over the world, on YouTube and on Facebook. Is there anyone tonight who is not a Seventh-day Adventist? May I see your hand? Any guest? You're not a Seventh-day Adventist. May I see your hand? All right. I am sure, as I say every night, we have guests who are connecting to us via the Internet. Thank you very much for your presence for your interest in the words of life. And may the Lord bless you, bless you, bless you. Because the Bible says in 1 Samuel 2, verse 30, them that honor me, I will honor. And when you make time for God, you have honored God, and God will honor you. That's guaranteed, because God cannot lie. I welcome all the countries represented by the audience. We thank God for you as I always say, and I mean it sincerely every time I say it. Our subject for this evening, a contract is a contract. What did I say? A contract is a contract. Before I go any further, of course, if you don't need one of these, make sure they're turned off. If you're using one, you don't need sound. So far, I have not heard a phone ring, and I thank you very much for your cooperative spirit. Favor number two, while I'm speaking, pray for me and say, Lord, put your words in that man's mouth. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 9, Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. 
And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth, and I sincerely want to speak God's words. And so you offer that prayer from time to time. Let me ask, who has prayed for me so far the past week and said, Lord, ah, God, God bless you. Thank you very much. Those of you who have not yet done it, tonight is an excellent opportunity to do that. Don't plan to do it tomorrow. Do it tonight. Favor number three, think. Isaiah 118, come now. Let us do what? Reason together, saith the Lord. God invites us to use this. And in doing that, the Spirit of God will bless that mental activity. So think, pray for me, and make sure your gadgets don't ring. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I come to you every night, and I've come tonight again. I need your help. I need your mercy. I need your spirit of truth. But Father, most of all, I need your forgiveness. If I've offended you, forgive me. But Father, do more than forgive me. Give me power to overcome whatever area in which I offended you. So that, Father, I can come to the place where you have risen me, you've lifted me, I should say, above forgiveness to the level of victory. Dear God, we have come to listen to your word. And my holy burden is to preach that word. I ask you in the name of Jesus, put your words in my mouth. Jesus said in John 16, 13, How be it, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. Father, carry out those words for me tonight. Guide me into truth as I teach your people. Let the Spirit working in me be the Spirit working in them. Bless all those connecting via the internet, YouTube, Facebook, or whatever other means people are using to listen to this program. Watch over us now as we worship. Surround us with angels that excel in strength. And at the end of this service, let every one of us know we have heard from you, not from me. I pray from my heart in Jesus' name. Amen. What's our subject? I can't hear you. A contract is a contract. Go to Genesis 3. We read verse 15. Genesis 3. Verse 15, and I read from the King James Version of the Bible. Brother John, welcome. God bless you. John, uh, Genesis 3, 15, the Bible says, this is God speaking. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. This is the first mention of the gospel. It is called the Adamic covenant because God spoke to Adam. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. God does things for us. Or let me say differently. God only does for us what we cannot do for ourselves. That's a fundamental principle of Scripture and must be understood in order to understand the gospel. I'll say it again. God only does for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Having said that, listen again to Genesis 3.15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now the reason why God puts the enmity is because we cannot put enmity in our hearts against sin. Because we are born with a nature that prefers sin. Let me say it differently. God does not have to put in us an urge to sin. We're born with that. Are you with me? When we sin, we need no help from God. We sin in our own strength. We sin in our own power. But to do what is right, we need help from God. Can you say amen? Without that help, we cannot do right in a way that pleases God. Because humanity has standards, God has standards. For instance, God says, if you lust after a woman, you're guilty of adultery. That does not work in an earthly court. Are you following me? 
No one is imprisoned for lusting because you cannot tell. But in God's system, if you lust, you're an adulterer. To so always understand God's system of holiness is light years different from ours. God says in his word, if you hate, you're angry with your brother without a cause, you are a murderer. And God doesn't joke. No one has been given a death sentence because he or she got angry. The Bible says thou shalt not covet. Coveting is idolatry. I'm saying all of this to let you know. Only God can put into the heart of a man hatred for sin. And so God says under the Adamic covenant, I will put enmity. I will do it. He did not ask Adam to put anything in or out of his heart. I will do it, says God. Observe, in this Adamic covenant, it is God who says what he will do. Of course, Adam just had to believe. When the Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God, that goes all the way back to Adam. Are you with me? Not just the New Testament. It goes all the way back to Adam. When the Bible says in Luke, 19 verse 10, the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Jesus said that 4,000 years after Adam, but he was doing that in the days of Adam. Because if God doesn't seek you, he will not save you. And so when God spoke that covenant, Adam's only part was to believe. But what was in the covenant was decided by God and God alone. Now, Let's go to another covenant. Genesis 9, we read from verse 8. Uh, uh, Noah and his family have come out of the ark. Genesis 9, reading from verse 8. Our subject, a contract is a contract. A little past 7.15, I'll let you out before 8. Let me pray again. Father, this is such a major subject Speak to me very clearly, I pray, in the name of Jesus, who was the word and the truth. Amen. And God spake unto Moses and to his sons with him, saying, And I, behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you, and with every living creature that is with you, of the fowls, of the cattle, and of every beast of the earth with you, of all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth. Now, God said, I'm making a covenant with you, with the animals, and with the earth. What did the earth have to do? Nothing. What did the animals have to do? Nothing. What did Noah have to add? Nothing. Verse 11. And I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood. Neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. God is saying, I will not send a flood anymore. He didn't say, I will never destroy the earth anymore. He says, I will never destroy it by water. And God said, this is the token of the covenant which I make with you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. Verse 13, I do bring my set my bow in the cloud and it shall be for a token of the covenant between me and and the earth and so it is with Noah with the animals with the earth and God decides what's in that covenant and the covenant was verse 14 it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud and I will remember my covenant which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh and the water shall no more be a flood to destroy all flesh. God is saying, my covenant is, I will never send water again to destroy the earth. Here is the bow, the rainbow. This is the sign. You can look at it and remember my covenant. Noah had to add nothing. Noah just had to believe. When God makes a covenant, he decides what's in the covenant. We have to believe or reject it. If that's clear, say amen. Let's go to chapter 12 of the book of Genesis. 
Our subject, a contract, is a contract. Genesis 12, we'll read from verse 1. Genesis 12, reading from verse 1, the three verses we're about to read are among the most important verses in the entire Bible. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, he was not yet Abraham, because he's not yet matured enough. He was still Abram, matured enough spiritually. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. Notice, a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee. And make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. This is the Abrahamic covenant, as it is called. It is in no way in conflict with the Adamic covenant, not at all. But it is called the Abrahamic covenant because it was spoken to Abraham. Listen microscopically to what the words tell us. Let's go to verse 1 again. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation. I will bless thee. I will make thy name great. Thou shalt be a blessing. I will bless them that bless thee. I will curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. In other words, I will make you a blessing to the entire earth. This is the Abrahamic covenant. It is filled from top to bottom with God's, what God says he will do. Understand me clearly. The Adamic covenant, this is what God says I will do. The Noahic covenant, this is what I will do. The Abrahamic covenant, this is what I will do. Let's go to Sinai. Exodus 19, reading from verse 4. Our subject, a contract, is a contract. We go to Mount Sinai. Exodus 19, I hope I didn't say Genesis. Exodus 19, we'll read from verse 4. God is speaking to uh, Moses. Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings and brought you unto myself. Look at that, those words carefully. Did the Israelites escape or did God bring them out? Not a trick question. Did the Israelites escape or did God bring them out? God brought them out. Because if God had not drowned the Egyptian army, they would have been back in Egypt. You have seen what I did unto the Egyptians and how I bear you on eagle's wings and I brought you unto myself. I did that, in other words, I delivered you from Egypt. What's your proper response? Now, therefore, if he will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Now, God places a condition. All you have to do is accept, obey what I say. The same way I brought you out of Egypt, I will take you out of sin. I will protect you. I will deliver you. I'll provide for you. I'll destroy your enemies. I'll bring water from a rock. I'll bring bread from heaven. I'll give you air conditioning in the day. I'll give you cooling uh, warmth at night. I will do that. Just obey me. Now let's look at the contents of that covenant on Sinai. Let's go to Exodus 34. We read it last night, I believe. Verses 27 and 28. Our subject, a contract, is a contract. Exodus 34, 27 and 28. And the Lord spake unto, 
And the Lord said unto uh, Moses, Write thou these words. For after the tenor of these words, I have made a covenant with thee and with Israel. And he was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights. He did neither eat bread nor drink water. And he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant, finish the verse, the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments the Bible expresses as God's covenant with Israel. And I told you, I believe last night, God's agreement was, I will take that and put it in here. But I'm taking those ten and putting them in here. I have decided these are the principles. These ten I will put in your heart. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4, let's read verses 12 and 13. Our subject, a contract is a contract. If you found that, say amen. Okay, I heard one person, all right. I'll proceed nonetheless. And the Lord spake unto you out of the midst of the fire. You remember God spoke to Moses out of the midst of the burning bush. This time it's a burning mountain. And the Lord spake unto you out of the midst of the fire. He heard the voice of the words, but saw no similitude. Only he heard a voice, and he declared unto you his covenant. What are the next few words? Which he what? Even the Ten Commandments, which he commanded you to perform, and he wrote them, finish the verse, upon two tables, a stone. Listen to verse 13 again. And he declared unto you his covenant. What was it? The Ten Commandments, which he commanded you to perform, and he wrote them upon two tables of stone. God's covenant, his promise, is another word for covenant, is that he will take those principles and place them in our hearts. Now, I said a covenant is a covenant is our title. If we review Adam's covenant, Noah and Abraham's, we will see that Adam did not contribute to the contents of that covenant. Follow me closely. Don't miss this. Noah did not add anything to that contract or that covenant God made with him. Genesis 12, Abraham did not add anything to that contract. All he did, according to Genesis 15, verse 6, he believed in the Lord. And the only belief God accepts is a working faith, a faith that produces works. Abraham believed in the Lord. He totally submitted himself to what God said. He believed in what God said. He submitted himself, body, soul, and spirit, and might, and might, and strength, and understanding to what God had said. Total submission. You said that, I accept it. He added nothing. Now, God said, my covenant is the Ten Commandments. Let's itemize the contents of God's covenant. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Who said that? God, not the Israelites. Are you with me? Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Who said that? God, not the Israelites. They were just listening to the contents of God's covenant, which they had to accept or reject. Three, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Who said that? God. Four, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou live and do all thy work, but the seventh day, or the first, or the fifth. Now, who said that? God. Where was it? In that covenant. Not the Israelites. God. Commandment five, honor thy father and thy mother. God said that. Commandment six, thou shalt not kill. Commandment seven, thou shalt not commit adultery. Commandment eight, thou shalt not steal. Commandment nine, thou shalt not bear false witness. Commandment ten, thou shalt not covet. Every item of that covenant was placed there by God. Not the Israelites. Listen to me again. I've learned by bitter experience, it's a mistake to assume that people understand what you're saying. It's because they're nodding their heads. 
It's a big mistake, and good teachers know that. Repetition is essential. Let me quiz you. Adam's covenant, what did Adam add? What did he take away? Nothing. Who's the next person? No, no, think, 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 think. Who's the next person? Noah. Genesis 9. What did Noah add to that covenant? What did he take away? Nothing. Listen to me carefully. Who's the next person? Abraham. What did he add? What did he take away? Nothing. Let's go to Mount Sinai. What did the Israelites add? What did they take away? Nothing. But there is an item of that covenant that the world has tried to take away. That's the Sabbath commandment. Are you following me? The Sabbath commandment is part of the covenant God has commanded us to perform with his power, of course. But the world has taken it out. But we have seen that when God makes a covenant, all the contents of the covenant are his contribution. No one contributes to God's covenant. You either accept it or you reject it. I'll tell you something else about the covenant. Go to Galatians chapter 3. We read from verse 15, our subject, a contract is a contract. Galatians 3, reading from verse 15. Has anyone prayed for me yet and said, Lord, put your words in that man's mouth? No one, no one. Okay, you still have time. Galatians, perhaps someone online has prayed for me. Thank you very much. Galatians 3, verse 15. Paul is speaking. Brethren, I speak after the man of men. Though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be what? Confirmed. No one disannulleth or addeth thereto. Now, what Paul is saying, when Christ died, he ratified that covenant. You can't add. You can't take away. It's ratified. I don't mean to be mischievous, but let me say this. If anyone wanted to change that covenant, which they couldn't, they should have tried before Christ died. Ah, you're not with me. Because the Bible says once it is confirmed, it's confirmed by the death of someone, no one adds or takes away. You can't add in Sunday to God's covenant. It was confirmed by Christ the seventh day. You can't take out Sabbath. When Jesus died, he confirmed or ratified. In other words, he signed it with his blood. When you rent an apartment, do you get a lease? Does it tell you how much you pay a month and what the down payment is? What happens if the landlord sees one little speck on the wall costs you $500? You know how it is. That's the agreement. You say yes, then you sign. You just then can't come back and say, well, the rent is $500, make it $400. No, the contract is $500. Now, God's covenant is Ten Commandments. The fourth one is the Sabbath is the seventh day. That's in God's contract. And he signed it with his blood. And Paul is clear, when a contract is confirmed, affirmed, or ratified, no one disannulleth or added, you can't take out and you can't add. But the world has tried to add. They've added Sunday and some Friday, others Wednesday. What did God say? The seventh day Sabbath. God is telling the world, a contract, come on, tell me, it's a contract. You either accept it or you reject it. Now God in his mercy, he pleads with us to accept it. Because under that covenant or contract are promises. Here's a promise that's under that covenant, that contract. Let's go to Ezekiel 36. Look at the tremendous promise. Ezekiel. Well, before we go there, let's go back to Exodus 19 and finish that passage. We look at some promises under that covenant. Exodus 19, we read four again and go down to six. Our subject, a contract is a contract. 
25 minutes to 8, I'll pray again. Father, I still feel the need for help from above. Give it to me, dear God, not for my sake, but for your sake and the blessing of your people. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Exodus 19, verse 4. Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings and brought you unto myself. Now, therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant. Notice it is whose covenant? My covenant. The Ten Commandments are God's covenant. They're not yours. They are not yours. No sinful person could have come up with the Ten Commandments. We can come up with ten sins. We cannot come up with ten principles of righteousness. God says, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be what? A peculiar treasure unto me. That's what he would make them. Above, come on, read with me. All people for all the earth or the world is mine. And ye shall be unto me, what? A holy nation. Hmm? A priesthood. If you obey, if you accept my covenant, a kingdom of priests, <laughs> the entire nation, a kingdom of priests, and a holy nation. They would have been holy on Thursday, not just on Sabbath. Are you following me? These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, God told Moses. God promises, I will make you a kingdom of priests. I will make you a holy nation. I will make you special to me. All you do is obey me. And I am so good, I will help you to obey by putting the law where? In your heart. Listen to me carefully. Let's read the new covenant. Go to Jeremiah 31. Let's read verse 33. Jeremiah 31, 33. And I really hope you're praying for me. I need it. Because the carnal mind does not love truth. It loves church, but not truth. Most people like church. They don't like truth. Because truth upsets your life. You've got to change it. You have Jeremiah 31, verse 33. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law where? In the inward parts. Come on and write it where? In their hearts. Now, we know what the law says, the Ten Commandments. Which means, listen to me carefully, when God writes on a person's heart, he writes seventh day. He does not write Sunday. Listen to me again. When God writes the law in the heart of a person, he writes, seventh day, not Sunday. In order for Sunday to be in your heart, if you have knowledge, you've got to erase what God wrote. And you can't do that. You can reject it. You cannot erase it because God's laws are eternal. I say again. When God puts his law in the heart and the writing principle or the writing instrument is the Holy Ghost, he writes seventh day. He does not write first because first is not in the contract. And the Bible says once the contract is confirmed by the death of the testator, you cannot add, you cannot take away. But people still try. Didn't God tell the Israelites, don't go looking for manna on the seventh day? Did they still go? Yes. Did they find any? No. It's amazing how hard-headed and suicidal the carnal nature is. My brothers and sisters, a contract is a contract. All the covenants God has made in the Bible. And it's really one central covenant with various expressions like the Adamic, the Noahic, and the Abrahamic. Every utterance of a covenant from God, it contains all that God has put in. He simply requires 
that we accept or reject. No one has ever contributed to God's covenant. Because no one is qualified. The sinful nature disqualifies us from contributing to a contract of righteousness. Because all our righteousness, finish it for me, are filthy rags. What I'm saying is that according to God's contract and covenant, the Sabbath is the seventh day. It has always been the seventh day from Adam. Let me show you how clear God was about the seventh day. Go to Genesis chapter 2. What chapter did I say? Of what book? Genesis. All right. Listen to how specific God is. God does not leave people confused about the essentials of the gospel. I want you to listen, read microscopically. This is before sin. This is in the garden. Genesis 2, reading from verse 1, let me pray, Father in heaven, as I come to the downward slope of this message, continue to fill me up with your spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Please, God. Amen. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, Genesis 2, 1. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. How many times do you see the seventh day? You haven't got all night. How many times do you see the seventh day? I told you read microscopically. How many times do you see the seventh day? Someone said three. Do I hear four? Someone else says three. Anyone else for three? You're looking at me. You should be looking at the Bible. How many times, this is what I mean by read microscopically. How many times do you see seventh day in Genesis 2 verses 2 and 3? No, five. Mm -hmm. Let me ease you of your misery. Now, where's Pastor Mokua? He's right over there. Notice what I said. Where is Pastor Mokua? Then what did I say? He is right over there. Does he refer to Pastor Mokua? Yes. What is he? A pronoun. Okay, let's look for five mentions of the seventh day. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day, that's three times, and sanctified, come on, it. Because that in it, five times. Somebody say amen. Five times. Now God really wanted Adam to get it. But not just Adam and Eve. Let me ask you a question. What was the population of the world when God said that? Two. But was that still the population of the world? Yes or no? Yes. Did God say that to the world? Yes. God did not need 9 billion people. The entire world's population was two. And God spoke to the world. And he said, I'm telling you, once, twice, thrice, four times, five times, the seventh day. A contract is a contract. Let me ask you a question. I know you'll answer me honestly. In God's contract on Sinai, what day is in that contract for worship? Now don't do that to me, please. What day is in that Ten Commandment contract? The seventh day. Mm -hmm. Can that be changed? No, it's already ratified and signed by the blood of Jesus. Not only that, we know from Adam's and Noah's and Abraham's, any covenant God make, makes, he determines the contents of the covenant no human being contributes. To change God's day is to make an attempt to change and to add, and that cannot happen. And so tonight, 
I offer you God's covenant of love. Now let's go to Ezekiel and see what I wanted you to see. Under that covenant, Ezekiel 36, verse 26 and verse 27, our subject, a co contract is a contract. If only people understood it is God who will change you, if they really believe that, more lives will be changed. Because with God, nothing shall be impossible. God doesn't care how long you've smoked dope. If you give your life to God, he has promised to change you. The problem is we do not give our lives to God. Ezekiel 36, 26, and 27, a new heart also will I give you. Who is giving the new heart? God. What did David pray in Psalm 51, 10? Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. That concept is in Ezekiel 36, 26. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh, and I will put my spirit within you, and will cause you to walk in my what? Yes, God says, I will cause you to walk, meaning I will cause you to obey. You've got to come to me. You've got to believe I can help you keep the Sabbath. Someone wrote me today from somewhere in the world. I work for an NGO and uh, up to now I've had no problems, but now a new director has come who wants me to work on Sabbath. What do I do? What do you do? You honor God's Sabbath. You never put livelihood ahead of God. You see, the devil knows we do that. That's why he told God, skin for skin, all that a man hath will he give for his life. That's what Esau did when he gave up the birthright for one bowl of, uh, one plate full of ugali. That's why he did that. Mm. He put survival ahead of faithfulness. I'm glad Daniel didn't do that. I am glad the three Hebrew boys didn't do that. And I am glad Jesus didn't do that. So I wrote back, obey God. Obey God and watch God take care of you. Mm -hmm. Obey God. And I'm praying for her that she obeys God. God said, I will put a new spirit within you. Let me ask you this question. How many of you would like God to put his spirit within you now? Can I see your hand? It's a spirit of obedience. Yes. David said, create in me a clean heart. How many of you would like God to do that for you? Can I see your hand? I believe you. Stand up with me. Now for those of you watching online, please ask God creating me a clean heart and a heart can only be clean if the law of God is written on it because there's no sin in the law of God and the law of God is an expression of the very righteousness of Christ which God has promised to cover us with tell God please father give me a heart to obey you because I cannot do it. I'm afraid of my relatives. I'm afraid of my job. I'm afraid of my friends. You give me that mind that will say like Job, though he slay me, come on, yet will I trust him. As bowed eyes closed, by the way, before I pray, fill out that decision card. I want to be baptized. Or I want to be rebaptized. Or I want to visit from a pastor if you're in this area. Or I need prayer. Fill it out. Let us know the information is on the screen. Fill it out. And some of you have the cards, the yellow cards, perhaps in the pews. Fill them out. Make your decision known unto God. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Dear God, I made a very weak attempt to provide, pre present a very, very important subject, but I hope, God, you'll take this attempt of mine, weak as it was, and allow it to make sense to those who heard. As your sons and your daughters whom you love meditate on what they've heard and they heard that when God makes a covenant, he decides the contents of that covenant. He never invites humanity to add. Father, help us to understand and submit to the biblical truth that the Ten Commandment covenant is decided by God. We can add or take away. When he writes that covenant, that law in our hearts, dear God, he writes the seventh day, not the first. 
in the name of Jesus, dear God, give us a willingness to humble ourselves before you and seek your salvation. Give us a willingness, dear God, give us the honesty to admit I cannot save myself. Give us the willingness, dear God, to admit I have been wrong. Father, here I come. Save me and give me a heart to obey you. Bless your sons and your daughters, dear God. Open their eyes to see that the signs of the end are real. And one day, Christ will cease to intercede and mercy will no longer plead. When we put our heads on those pillows tonight, let us sleep with the knowledge, I have surrendered this rebellious heart of mine to God and I have invited him to write his law of righteousness on my heart, the law that expresses the very righteousness of Christ. Hear this humble prayer. Bless those before me, those on YouTube, those on Facebook, wherever people are listening, bless them, dear God. And may your spirit save souls tonight. In Jesus' name, let God's people say, Amen and Amen. God bless you, my beloved friends. I'm always happy to see you. Come back tomorrow and try to bring someone with you. And tonight, meditate on what you've heard.